Hello, in this video we're going to look at particular kinds of reactions and those are exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions. Now, in, on the screen there we have an example of a reaction, so we're just going to look at the idea of energy changes in reactions overall first before we do these two different kinds of reactions. Now, if you imagine that we have an acid and an alkali which react together, they make salt and water, and we've looked at that in a previous video. We call that reaction a neutralization reaction. And this is actually an example of a reaction that gives out heat energy. So we could, for example, imagine, and this is just, a, just an example to illustrate the point, but we could imagine that there's 100 joules of energy in the chemicals in the acid and the alkali, and when that heat energy is given out to the surroundings, let's for example say that's 10 joules of energy given out to the surroundings, that means whatever energy there is in the two chemicals that are remaining, the two products, must be the 100 minus the 10. And that is actually going to be, in this example, 90 joules. Now, we can actually take that example and use it to figure out a rule for energy transfers in chemical reactions. And that is the idea that the amount of energy in the universe, and we do talk in terms of the universe, not in just terms of the, a system or a room. So we say the amount of energy in the universe is the same at the end of a chemical reaction as it was at the beginning. We say energy is conserved in chemical reactions. And as we said, we talk in terms of the whole universe, not just the area in which the reaction is happening. So we can actually take a look at an example of an exo and endothermic reaction. So we start off on the left here with our exothermic reaction. We place a thermometer in the reaction with the, with the uh, reactants. And you'll notice that as the reaction proceeds, because it's exothermic, the temperature rises. And this is detectable using a thermometer. So there's our exothermic reaction showing a rise in temperature. We could look at an endothermic reaction as well and you would notice that for this example in our endothermic reaction there is actually a drop in temperature as shown by the thermometer so this this is the difference between the two types of reaction the exo and endothermic reaction if we see what's going on with the exothermic reaction we can just note that energy is transferred to the surroundings from the chemicals. So the chemicals react and transfer energy to the surroundings. With our endothermic reaction, its, it's energy is transferred from the surroundings to the chemicals. And if we look at how the two reactions feel, well, for the exothermic reaction, it will feel hot because the temperature of the surroundings increases. And for our endothermic reaction, that actually feels cold because the temperature of the surroundings decreases. So that's the difference between the two types of reaction, the exothermic reaction and endothermic reaction. And it might be worth pausing here just to make a note of those two, because that's two very important points. However, we can now actually move on to look at examples of endothermic and exothermic reactions. So if we start off with our exothermic ones, we have three examples that we need to remember. So we've got three examples. Example number one is quite an obvious one if you think about it. This is combustion reactions. Combustion means burning. So any reaction that involves burning is an exothermic reaction. It transfers heat energy to the surroundings. And one simple example of that would be just some methane reacting with oxygen. So methane gas reacting with oxygen in a combustion reaction. And that happens every time you switch on your Bunsen burners in the classroom. Okay, so this is the methane reacting with oxygen. Uh, that's a combustion reaction and it's exothermic. A second example of exothermic reactions is that of what we call oxidation. And many oxidation reactions are actually exothermic. We could give one example that's actually from biology and not from chemistry, but it's a good example to use. And that's the reaction called respiration, which happens in all living cells. This is a exothermic reaction and actually contributes to maintaining body temperature for mammals. We've got one more example that we need to know about and remember, and that's neutralization, the neutralization reaction between acid and alkali. And in fact, the reaction that we looked at right at the beginning, this one here, acid plus alkali, this is a neutralization reaction, as we said, and this is exothermic. So when we have acid plus alkali, it's a neutralization reaction. So we can, just we can just highlight those three reactions that we need to know. And we can just note a couple of examples where this is actually used to do something useful. So the first one is with hand warmers. So we can have uh, containers or packets 
that have chemicals in them that when they react release heat energy and we also use it for self-heating cans and by self-heating cans we mean cans of perhaps food e.g some soup or maybe a drink like coffee that we have a chemical reaction that happens and the release of the heat energy will heat up the soup or the coffee or the food that you have in that container and they work on this idea of reacting chemicals that have an exothermic effect okay so examples of our endothermic reactions we have a couple that we need to know and remember and the first one is that of what we call thermal decomposition so this is a reaction where a chemical breaks down or decomposes and one example of that which we may you may have come across before is that of calcium carbonate calcium carbonate actually thermally decomposes to make calcium oxide and carbon dioxide but that's a endothermic reaction a second example would be a quite specific one and this is the reaction between citric acid and hydrogen sodium hydrogen carbonate so citric acid with sodium hydrogen carbonate there we go sodium hydrogen carbonate remember hydrogen carbonate is actually one word now these sounds like some fancy chemicals but actually they are found in sherbet sweets that give you that kind of fizzy feeling in the mouth and that's actually an example of a endothermic and endothermic reaction what uses do we have apart from sweets well a common one is that of sports injury packs you may have had or use one of these before basically there are two chemicals separated from each other in a pack you can squeeze or crush the pack mix the chemicals and that will cause an endothermic reaction and have a cooling effect so there's that two examples for endothermic reactions and one example of where it's used i.e the sports injury packs okay so this is an introduction to exo and endothermic reactions we're going to look at this in a little bit more detail in the next video so thank you for watching and i'll see you soon